If you're visiting Healdsburg, you probably have your favourite things to do. But are they the same things that everyone else does? Go to the Matheson, check. Wander around the plaza, check. Visit Flowers Winery, check. Would it be nice to experience Healdsburg like a local? Or do things that not everyone else does? In this video, I'll give you 20 ideas of things to do and experience that aren't on the list of the thousands of other visitors who come to Healdsburg. You know, go to an El Salvadorian restaurant that I think is one of the best restaurants. See a migration of Swifts that people come from all over the world to see. Or go to a live music venue off the beaten track. Of course, it's nice to do all the things that Healdsburg is famous for, such as, you know, go on a bike ride on West Dry Creek Road, or get a pastry from Quail and Conda. But there are so many hidden gems that most people don't get to experience. If you watch the end of this video, You'll find out you know, where locals go to get the best sandwich in town, how to go on a run with a local running company, or take part in a secret treasure hunt around town. My name is David Hargreaves, one of the top five agents in Healdsburg, who over the past two years has worked with over 50 people, you know, just like you from the Bay Area and beyond, to buy and sell homes in Healdsburg. But less about me, let's talk about how to visit Healdsburg and live like a local with my top 20 list of the things to do and places to go. So first on the list is Downtown Bakery. If you're looking for a bakery where you can enjoy a pastry and a coffee in a relaxed atmosphere, I'm afraid this isn't it. Downtown Bakery is very much an institution having been in existence for over 35 years. Although last year, the bakery, it was actually taken over by some of the long-term employees after the owner retired. The thing that they are most well known for are their sticky buns, which are amazing. I mean, I personally love their bran muffins, as well as their range of galettes, which come either as individual ones or as larger ones for entertaining. The strawberry and rhubarb one is my favorite, but they have other flavors, including blackberry, apple, I think they have a pear one as well. And these galettes, I must say, they do pair incredibly well with noble folk vanilla ice cream, but more on ice cream in a little bit. A lot of people were fearful of it closing down and losing their supply of their favorite baked goods. But after a brief shutdown, it actually reopened earlier this year. To be honest, it was pretty much exactly as it has been for the previous 35 years. So, you know, all was well, normal service was resumed. Second on the list is Elephant in the Room. This is definitely a locals pub and one which you will, you know, you won't stumble across it because it's located on the left hand side, you know, before you come to the traffic circle as you drive into town. The bar, or pub as I would call it, is, is fairly small, but out the back there's a good sized outdoor patio, which is a great place to go on a summer evening. They serve, you know, standard pub fare of, you know, hot dogs, hand pies, pizza, but to be honest, you don't go there for the food. The food's there to sustain you through having, having a few drinks and, you know, listening to the live music. Most Fridays, they'll have a live band starting at maybe eight o'clock or nine o'clock, catering to a, a definitely a wide range of music tastes. They do charge a nominal fee of about $10, but if you're into live music, you definitely won't be disappointed. Next on the list is the secret fairy doors. This one is a little bit left field, but hear me out. In 2017, small, you know, fairy doors began popping up around downtown Healdsburg. Apparently, the first earliest confirmed door was noticed by the museum curator and executive director. You know, the first one appeared literally right by the museum. If you look at it, it actually looks like it's trying to replicate the museum door itself. The next doors that appeared were at a children's toy and clothing store. As you can see from the map, these are located like at various places around town. So as with the door at the museum, if you look closely at many of these fairy doors, they reflect the architectural aspects of their host building. One of my favorites is the door at the Bradford Brenner Gallery in the Healdsburg Plaza, which features a, a lookalike painting behind the little door. So in a future video, I'll actually be doing a tour of the plaza with Bradford Brenner, who is a well-known artist in town. This should definitely be a fun one and one to watch out for. Healdsburg isn't alone in having these fairy doors around town though. It's one of a small number of towns across the US and, and as well as Ireland, I believe, where mythical fairy doors have sprung up. So if you have young children, the fairy door treasure hunt is definitely a good activity to intersperse with wine tasting. You know, have a glass or two of wine and then go hunt for the fairy doors around town with your kids. Next up on the list is Craftwork. If you are visiting Healdsburg, but you have some work to do or have an important meeting, 
you definitely need to check out Kraftwerk. It's Healdsburg's version of WeWork, although to be honest, it's nothing like WeWork really, as you'd expect. You know, it's a little more relaxed with, you know, great lounge area and a fireplace at the front with a combination of, you know, hot desks and permanent desks, as well as, you know, dedicated offices. It used to be an old furniture store and prior to that a bank. The old vault has actually been converted into a meeting room, you know, where I'm recording this video right now. You can even see the vault door behind me here. As well as having my W Real Estate office in Healdsburg Avenue, I also have a desk here because it's just such a great place to work with an eclectic mix of people. While other members are people who maybe have got second homes in Healdsburg and use this space to work when they're in town. Craftwork also has a couple of meeting rooms for large corporate meetings, as well as a fun event space out the back, which has both an indoor and an outdoor option. So if you are thinking of doing some sort of event in Healdsburg, Craftwork is definitely somewhere you could consider checking out. So the fifth one on the list is a hike at Healdsburg Preserve. Healdsburg Open Space Preserve was created in 2003 and includes you know, 155 acres of land that's protected by you know, various different conservation easements. It's got an impressive array of habitat consisting of you know, a wide array of plants and animals, including wetlands and oak woodlands you know, as well as open grasslands. It's a really, really beautiful place to go for a walk. There are numerous trails throughout the preserve which make for, you know, an excellent place in the city limits to go for a short hike or a trail run. But Nancy's Trail is a good one for a short hike. Nancy's Trail is just a, you know, it's just a couple of miles long and it's a great trail um, and it's also child friendly, which is great. Next on the list is Park Point. If hiking isn't enough exercise for you, then you can buy a day pass at Park Point for just $30 and attend classes, use the equipment, as well as use the outdoor pool, which is great. Technically, I think you're meant to be staying at a hotel or B&B, but I, I don't think they really care. And this is a great option if you're with a group of friends and fancy hanging out by the pool or going to a steam room or sauna. And if you are here for an extended period of time, you can actually buy a pass for a month without paying the joining fee, or that's certainly the case at the moment. So, you know, if you don't want to sign up for the ongoing membership of $110 per month, that's definitely an option. Next on the list is The Daily Method. If you'd rather just go to a studio, then you should check out The Daily Method. They have a range of spin, yoga and Pilates classes and have a monthly sort of unlimited membership, which is, is really for locals. But they do provide more flexible options where you can buy a one-off pass for a single class for $28, I think it is, or they also have a 10 pass pack for $220. That could be handy if you are up here fairly regularly and fancy taking part in one of their classes over the course of a weekend. The studio is, has been going since 2019 and like many fitness studios, you know, it's had to adapt during COVID. So it's great to see that it's still going strong. I mean, largely because they do have an incredibly strong local following. I understand that certainly over the coming months, they are going to be making some changes and and having a broader range of classes. So you'll definitely have even more to choose from if you fancy checking out some of their classes. Number eight on the list is the skate park. I should definitely issue a disclaimer for this one because to be honest, I've never been on a skateboard in my entire life. However, I do have a little bit of insight into it. I've got a client who's got a 15 year old son who was really excited to move to Healdsburg with his parents largely because he knew it had a great skate park. He went there and he, to be fair, he did confirm it was a great skate park, but he said it was full of little kids on scooters. So he decided it just wasn't cool enough for him. However, I do have another friend of mine who was visiting from Marin. He took his six year old boy who's got a scooter and he thought it was the most amazing skate park. So I'll definitely let you decide if, if this is the place for you and your family. Number nine on the list is pickleball. I must say, if I was doing this video a few weeks ago, I'd have zero experience of pickleball, but I can now say that I'm a signed up member. You know, I bought the bats, although apparently they're called paddles, and started playing recently with a group of friends. To be honest, I've known about pickleball for quite a while, but I've always thought I would do it once I get too old to do other sports, but I guess, I guess I've been lured in. All you need are the paddles and the balls and find yourself a court. The ones that I use are in Georgie Park, just outside of the downtown area. Uh, these pickleball courts are painted within the service lines of a tennis court, but elsewhere in town there are dedicated pickleball courts. And also there is an active pickleball league in town. If you aren't familiar with pickleball, it's a cross between 
tennis and table tennis. And to be honest, it, it is a lot of fun. The great thing about it is even if you haven't played before, you can quickly pick it up. To be honest, as long as you have someone else to do the scoring, because that's probably the, the hardest and most complicated part of it. Next on the list is Summer's Market. So while you are over this side of town by the pickleball courts and you've worked up an appetite, you'd have to go to Summer's Market for a sandwich. It's located about halfway down Powell Street and does the best sandwiches. It does a range of hot and cold sandwiches, but my favourites are the hot sandwiches, especially the Andrew, which is a soft roll with smoked meat and coleslaw. They also have a great pastrami sandwich and a Reuben. If you don't fancy one of you know, the hot sandwiches, then they also do have a range of cold sandwiches and salads to choose from as well. But I would highly recommend Summer's Market as a place to go for a great sandwich. So next on the list is Noble Folk. If you fancy something sweet after lunch, head back to the plaza and get in line for an ice cream from Noble Folk. This is run by a couple of entrepreneurs who also own a company called Moustache Baked Goods, which actually closed its Healdsburg location during the pandemic. And they also own a place called the Pastry Annex. The flavours at Noble Folk will often change with the season, which, which is great, but they'll al always have a few staples such as cookies and cream and also the salted caramel, which I like. The first time I went there, I actually looked at the size of the single scoop and thought, ah, oh, that, that's going to be way too small. So I, I went for a double scoop. But trust me, one scoop is definitely enough. It's really rich ice cream. I had, must say I did have a bit of a bad phase when I had a habit of ending every afternoon bike ride here and then have an ice cream at the end. And to be honest, even after a bike ride, one scoop was still plenty. I often forget, but as well as ice cream, they also do do great pies if you're looking to buy a dessert. Trying one of their pies is definitely on my list to do. Number 12 on the list is the Healdsburg Running Company. So once you've, you know, once you've loaded up on ice cream, you might want to work it off. Healdsburg Running Company is a local institution run by the Energetic Skip. Uh, they've got an incredibly active running community meeting up for group runs on a regular basis. So for example, every Saturday morning at 8 a.m., they do a run starting at different places every week. They have a variety of different locations where the runs start from, which will you know, generally involve driving to the start. For example, they'll run um, up at Lake Sonoma on the north end of town in Annadale Park in Santa Rosa, or out by the coast near Jenna. In addition to the Saturday runs, there's also a regular Trail Sisters run on a Tuesday, which I think starts at six o'clock. And then a Thursday run at six o'clock, which will typically end up at a place to eat and drink somewhere, somewhere around town. Healdsburg Running Company also, they do organize a whole bunch of special events throughout the year for both serious and, and definitely for less serious runners. For example, they organize the annual Thanksgiving Turkey Trot, which this year had over 2,000 runners taking part on Thanksgiving Day. So next on the list is Marine Lair. It's hard to create this video without mentioning at least one winery, given locals spend quite a bit of time drinking wine. And I don't have the time, I'm sure you don't have the time either, to listen to me going through my list of favourites. The one that I would recommend for the purpose of this video is, is Marine Lair, which is located like right in the square. This only opened since the pandemic, and is the brainchild of Baron Ziegler, who also founded Banshee just down the street, which he then sold to the Foley Group. In many ways, Marine Lair borrows from a number of the elements which made Banshee so successful. So rather than just create a tasting room, they've tried to create an environment which is more like a lounge or a wine bar than, than just a tasting room. So if you do fancy a glass of wine, it's a really good alternative to going to a bar. It's, it's, they've created a really great environment there. Because of this, it's also open a little bit later than a lot of the tasting rooms, which, are, which is nice to be able to just hang out and have a drink. Next on the list is, lo and behold. So if you do end up going to Marine Lair, you can then head down off to lo and behold for, for some global comfort food, which is, is how they describe their fare. This is another place that has definitely, it's only opened more recently and is a good locals eating place as well as a good place for a cocktail. The menu here comprises small plates that include egg rolls, crispy spare ribs, chicken tenders, and of the larger plates, I highly recommend the brisket tacos. They're, they're just so good. And if you are here in the summer, there's a great outdoor space at the back, although there are also quite a few tables inside as well as under a covered area at the back. So there's definitely lots of seating choices sort of regardless of the weather. Number 15 on the list is Madrona. Again, this is another new addition to the locals restaurant list. It's the restaurant at Madrona. I'm not normally a fan of restaurants that are part of a hotel, but 
And don't ask me why, maybe it's, maybe it's a British thing, but the newly opened Madrona after its $6 million facelift of the historic 19th century Madrona Manor is definitely a great place to go for a cocktail and for dinner. They've done a really great job of creating, you know, a relaxed environment, but it's, it's definitely quite eclectic. Whether you're in the small bar at the back or the main dining room in the hotel or even outside on the outdoor patio. So depending on what your mood you're in, there are, there's definitely lots of places to hang out, all of which they've got their own sort of distinct charm. I know when they were reimagining the hotel, they definitely tried to create an environment that was equally appealing to locals as well as to hotel guests and I think they've done a really good job of achieving that. Even if you don't have time to go there for dinner it's definitely worth checking out for a pre-dinner cocktail and just hanging out on the porch. It'd be remiss of me to create this list and not have a bike ride on there so I think the the bike ride I would recommend is to cycle Sweetwater Springs. There are numerous great rides starting from downtown Healdsburg. The most common one is probably some variation on a loop around West Dry Creek um, Dry Creek out to Geyserville, then come back around Highway 128 into Alexander Valley. This is a gentle 30 mile ride with, I think it's about 1200 feet of elevation. One of my favorite local rides is to ride over to Guerneville via Sweetwater Springs Road. So if you leave town on Westside Road and, and head south, about halfway down Westside Road, you'll turn right onto Sweetwater Springs Road. And then for the next 10 miles, it's a beautiful road. You're unlikely to see another car or bike as you wind your way up and over a couple of ridges over to Guerneville. This is a 37 mile loop with 2,700 feet of elevation, most of which is concentrated into the first 10 mile section open over Sweetwater Springs Road with sections. Although they're very short, they are as steep as 20% gradient. So it's definitely, it's definitely a workout, but definitely worth it. If you do take on this ride, make sure to take appropriate clothing because when you drop down into Guerneville, it can often be, I don't know, 15, 20 degree cooler than when you set off in Healdsburg. The good news is though, there is a great bakery in Guerneville called Big Bottom Market that does just the best iced biscuits. So definitely recommend you have one of those. Number 17 on the list is Healdsburg Hotel Spirit Bar. Another local's favorite for a happy hour cocktail is the Spirit Bar, which is the courtyard at the back of Hotel Healdsburg. The Spirit Bar offers an extensive drinks menu and a, an array of small bites from Charlie Palmer's Dry Creek Kitchen. You know, as well as a curated list of single barrel scotches, it does have an extensive list of wine by the glass, which is great, and all from local wineries. So number 18 on the list is bird migration at Rio Linda Academy. This one is definitely a little different and aimed at the nature lovers among you. So every September since, I think it was back in 1989, a huge flock of swifts stops to rest at this private academy during the migration from Mexico to Venezuela. But this isn't just any old flock. There can be as many as 35,000 birds that come here during the day, then roost in a chimney at night. I mean, it really is quite a sight. As the birds enter the chimney, they create a tornado-like effect in the sky. And the birds typically arrive at the Real Linden Academy, which is just south of Healdsburg in late August and leave by mid-September. But this isn't just a sight for locals, as bird enthusiasts come from all over the country to observe this phenomenon. The school charges a small fee of $10, to get access to the school where the birds roost, but it's definitely worth every cent. 19th on the list is the distillery called Alley Six. Most people come to Healdsburg for its wines, but there are also a couple of great distilleries you should check out. There's one called Young and Yonder, as well as Alley Six, both of which are on the west side of town. Alley Six is a range of craft gins, whiskies, and spirits, which you can taste for $15 when it's open from Thursday to Sunday. However, they also do do a great range of cocktails which you can enjoy at your leisure. If you like what you taste, there's also a club with you know, regular shipments to keep you stocked up on your gin and whiskey. And they also do regular events as you'd get with a lot of the wine clubs as well. So if you're into spirits, that's definitely a good place to go. So last but not least is Gizo, which is an El Salvadorian restaurant serving Latin infusion food. I was debating whether or not to put this on the list. Not not because it doesn't deserve it, but because I find it hard enough to book a table here as it is. So I, to be honest, I don't want it to get too busy. But Gizo is located just off the square and is owned and run by a family from El Salvador. It's hard to describe what exactly El Salvadorian food is like, apart from to say it's definitely different from anything else I've had. And 
To be honest, I've never ever been here and been disappointed. Until COVID allowed them to open up an outdoor dining area on the patio, there were literally just five tables inside, so it was incredibly difficult to book a table. The great news is that they now have double the number of covers with you know, addition of this outdoor space, which does also have patio heaters, which is great. The food is, is all designed to be you know, eaten family style and shared. And one of my favorite starters is pupusa, which are the stuffed corn dough pockets with a choice of pork or vegetarian fillings. Just to give you an idea of how different it is, the vegetarian filling has laroco in it, which is a vine with edible flowers. I mean, one of my other favorites are the Cuban sandwich sliders, which are just delicious. I challenge you to find something on the menu that isn't delicious, to be honest. So that's my top 20 list. I hope you enjoyed some of my suggestions for things to do that I know are a little bit different from the usual suspects that people do when they come to Healdsburg. I know from my own experience of traveling to various different places, it's much more fun to enjoy a place, you know, through the eyes of a local rather than just following the list of what other people do. You know, visiting is never the same as living here, but Hopefully this gives you a taste of what it could be like to live here. If you want to make the move and buy a place, then please do get in touch and I'll be happy to help you find the perfect place or, or just help you along your journey. I hope you enjoy this video. Until the next video, go well.